guys. Look who came for the video today. Hey, what are you looking at? Look at the people and say hi. They like you. Here's me being Evie. They're just not used to anybody being here anymore. Yeah, but nobody's here most of the time, huh? But we're going to have a video today. Let's see if the kitties come and join us. Come on, Rob. Let's go back and do it. Well, Meep did decide to come back from the tutorial. He's more intrigued lately because we're usually downtown in the shop where we're building the new messy workshop now. Kind of funny we just got this one done, but the opportunity came to go down to the shop, and I'm sure you've seen those videos, so we don't need to go back and dwell on that. But Meepy kind of misses us sometimes, and so he's all intrigued because Rob's here to do the video. But we got to do the video now, okay? Okay, but down you go. Today we're going to review Lindsay Alford's tutorial that's archived on the bsuboutiques.com website that deals with swelligant patina products over resin forms. Now, you've probably seen all the different resin roses and cameos and blanks and stuff that's out on the market. Most of them are made in China. They always have been. Um, I've had many, many vintage ones. They've always been made, made in China or in Japan. Right now, most of them are made in China. And we do carry the resin forms at Bisu Boutiques. We carry them in colored form and pretty, pretty roses. Uh, we carry blanks and like creams and whites. Lindsay used the ones and the creams and the whites to do the swell again over. Um, my examples today have been the same type of thing. But you can really go over a colored cameo or anything you want. You can do amazing things and create patina, real metal patina, on plastic. So run to the site when this is all over, after you've watched it, and grab yourself a copy of Lindsay's tutorial. It will print out. Now, it is Lindsay's intellectual property, so to speak. So um, we always want to give her credit for being the first one to do this. But I'm going to kind of demonstrate today uh, what she taught me about it and the Swelligant product, and also some things I've come up with as well. So come on over to the Messy Workshop, and I'm going to show you how you can do it too. So here are some examples of things that I've used Swelligant on to create color and patina. Some of these are still a little wet, and the reason for that is you might remember from watching other videos and tutorials, reading tutorials about Swelligant, that you stop the patina action by dunking them in water. So these have been recently dunked and they're not quite all the way dry yet, but they're dry enough for me to work with them. But they start out like that. If you want to see, they start out like that. Plain. Um, so it's really cool how aged that you can make them look. And I do have some that are dry I'm going to show you in a little bit, but we're going to kind of experiment with these. So I'm going to kind of show you how you lay it down on one of these. First of all, you're going to start with a metal coating, and in Swelligant there's brass, copper, silver, um, bronze, pewter, iron, and I might have missed one, but anyway, go to our website, you'll see them. Okay, and just to show you, these, this is what my old bottle, you see is very well worn of copper. Um, the thing about it is, these are paint with metal in them. They're not just a color or an ink or a tint. They're paint with metal in them. It's in there with a resin binder. And just to show you, I had not quite capped this good enough, and that's not something you want to do because it will thicken up on you and won't be able to use. But just to show you what happened. See this? That's not from color getting stuck in there. That's patina. That's actually forming on that metal paint So from getting to air. So that's how much metal is in that paint. So anyway, um, I, one of my favorites is brass. So I'm going to get a new bottle just for the sake of it. First of, all, first of all, with a new bottle, of course, you want to shake it up away from yourself. Now open it carefully as it may release a gas and kind of pop on you or splurt. That doesn't usually happen, but it can, so always be careful. This is nice and fresh. Okay, so now, you know, you're going to, oh, it stuck to me. Anyways, <laughs> you're going to develop your own technique of how you do it. But I tend to just kind of push it up. That was just a bubble. Push the metal paint just needs. Okay, it's good. And get my sponge brush in it. 
I like using a sponge with swelligant. Rich, rich metal paint. And now I'm going to lay it on. And another reason I like a sponge, especially with these resin forms, is because they have a lot of dips and cracks, you know, in the mold. And that way you get into them. Because if you don't get this metal paint in there, then it's not going to take patina. Because the patina is not going to form on plastic. The patina forms on this plastic because you have laid down the metal paint. And that's why you will get the patina. Now the only thing with sponges is it kind of makes bubbles and if you don't brush those bubbles out they will dry in there. So you might want to take your finger afterwards or take the brush and kind of smooth them out. Okay and you may, and, and as Lindsay says in her tutorial, you may want to do a couple of coats. Let one dry and then come back and do another one. Depends on how thick you want it. Usually I'm able to get enough on first time. But it's all your aesthetic, you know, what you're going for. Now if you wipe it, you'll just wipe it off down and look like kind of aged bone, which is kind of a cool look too, kind of like this one looks. Um, but anyway, you want to get that on nice and thick. I would probably go a little thicker, but for the sake of time, I may have to just go ahead with it. Just so you get the concept, that's all. And really, this concept is pretty much the same thing as you would do over polymer clay. And you know, that was one of the main reasons that Swelligant was developed, was to go over polymer clay. So the techniques that I'm showing you here pretty much work the same for you over polymer clay. But you've got to get that metal paint down good, or you're not going to get patina on it. It's not going to form patina. Okay, now a really good way to get your patina on it, as uh, Lindsay says in her tutorial, is to put your patina, which you have the Tiffany green, you have the gold green, you have the darkening, in a misting bottle like this. This is a Ranger Mini Mister. I haven't done it. Um, I should have to show you, but that would be a really good idea because then you could kind of spray it on and it'd be nice and even. But what I can do, like if you don't have a mister, or for the lack of something else, right now for the lack of time, because I don't want to make this video last all day, um, I take a little piece of sponge that I've cut, and I take it and put it down in the bottle and dampen it real well. Okay. Now I'll just take that and just let it flow over there. And that's it. It's on. Maybe I'll get some of the bubbles out a little bit. Okay. It's on. That's pretty much it. Now you're going to leave that sit for at least 30 minutes, up to 60, up to two days. If you leave this two days, it's going to be completely like coppery green patina. I like about 60 minutes, personally. Lindsay's tutorial is awesome because if you go online and look at it, she did 30 minutes, 60 minutes, and more, so you can see the progress of the patina as it goes along. So that's really cool. Now on these, when they're dry, you could add something to them, or you could distress this back. And there's several ways to go. So that's why I would like to take you over to the other desk and show you the ones that are done. But again, to stop the action of the patina after you get to the place where you like how it looks, then you see I've got my water here, just throw it in the water. Just throw it in the water and then take it back out and you can dry it and then you'll be ready to distress it, add color, do whatever else you'd like to do. So um, let me set these aside and Rob come over to the other desk with me and we'll show them some completed things that I've done. Okay so as you can see we've got a lot of different finished examples here. Um, maybe I'll start with these in the front. This one was this one came out very very rusty. I did the gold green and it came out very very rusty. So I distressed it and then I added a little bit of gold vintage patina. This product just came out. We're just getting it on the uh, website on a rag and just buffed it out to get a little color in it. This one I buffed out, distressed it with, you know, this nail block thing. You don't need to buy anything fancy. Just go to the dollar store and buy one of these. Um, I distressed it out, and then I added Spectrum Noir alcohol ink, 
to this. And we carry these. This would be from the red set, this would be from the green set. So they also work very nicely over top of the swelligant. Um, another thing that you can do, and I did it on this one, is the gold leafing pens that are on the market. Now we no longer carry them because they've just gotten so expensive, but I happen to have one down here. And if you just happen to have one in your uh, workshop, they will work too. And so that's what I did with this one, is I used this. It had gone kind of green patina, and I just, 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 just distressed it. And then I added the gold leafing pen. Added gold leafing pen on that, a little bit on that. Um, these were metal that I did with Swelligant. And then I put a gloss finish on them just for, I usually do matte, but I did gloss just because I wanted to see what it looked like. So I did the Swelligant, and then I did the Swelligant on the resin forms too. And then I glued them to the top. So now I'm going to make these in cute little necklaces from my shop. And here's some chain that I had actually done with Swelligant in the dioxides. Here's the bead and link chain that we carry at the BCBoutiques.com website. We also carry this form. We also carry these roses. Um, this would look really nice with that. This is some stuff that I have. This is check painted gold fire polish beads. They call this rosary chain sometimes. That would look nice paired with that, or with that. A little bit of designing going on there. So I'll put these in my shop. This would look good on it too. With this one. Do you think that will look good? But I like to double up chain. You know, I've done the videos on neckline treatments, and I don't like to just do a simple chain. I like to do something funky with it. So we'll see what I come up with. Maybe you'll have to come to my shop and see what happened, but it won't be open for a couple of months yet. Sometime in November, early November. Okay, this is interesting. This was the white form, and I simply used, I didn't do any swell again on this, I just simply used the white and the Victorian gold patina, the Ranger branded vintage designer ink, and put it on there and wiped it off so that was kind of a cool look and it dries really quick too so if you don't have time to wait for patinas then you could do that you will not raise patina with this ink okay you gotta have the metal paint now you can give it a patina look with other paints and that's fine nothing wrong with that but if you like the idea of raising real patina over plastic it's kind of a funky scientific thing don't you think um, then you gotta have the metal paint these all had the metal paint, all of them. Different colors of metal paint. This one had iron. This one had the, the gold brass. That's it. This one got scrubbed back with the patina. Now, I did add a little highlight of this on a rag. These have been highlighted with a little bit of Gilder's paste. But the patina is all from Swelligan. This is all from Swelligan. This has the bronze on it. Okay. Uh, these all swell again with a little bit of um, what did I use? I used the Gilder's paste on this. So it's just to show you the different things you can do. I used the gold leafing pen on this and Gilder's paste on this side. I used um, the Spectrum Noir paint pen on the edge, this one too. And then I used a little bit of this in the metal, just on my finger, on my glove. Um, this one, I just distressed it a lot. I didn't add anything to it, and I did a gloss glaze just to see how it would look. This one was just the patina. You can see how green it got. I left this down here a couple of days and forgot about it, so it got really green. And then this gold, I used this to raise. Okay, so there's lots of ways to go. These, nothing has happened really too much to them yet. Well, this one's pretty much ready to go. I put a little bit on there, so... I would probably put that on there. But you, I want to show you. If you can see real close. You see the bubbly stuff down in there? That's from my brush. Because I didn't get that brushed out good enough. Now, I like the texture. It's artistic. It doesn't really bother me. But if you don't like that look, then you be, better be sure maybe take a toothpick and pull it through or something when you're done applying your patina. Or else you're going to have this little spongy, bubbly looking stuff from there. Okay. Alright, now, I've got one here, 
that I have not distressed yet. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to distress it just to show you. I'm going to use this. And this one's really good and dry. And you want to be sure it's really good and dry. So basically it's just like filing your nails, you know, or relieving rusty black brass, which we sell at vcboutiques.com. And I've done a lot of videos on that. Just to kind of get some of that top layer off so that you can maybe add a little something, something else. Okay? Sometimes, too, if it gets on there a little bit too thick and you don't like it, you can... Okay. I've, I've distressed that pretty well. Now, so you can see what it looks like distressed. You might say, you know what, Brenda Sue? I like it like that. I wouldn't do a thing to it. And that would be just fine. But say you want to. Okay? I'm going to use some Gilder's paste. This is antique gold. I'm going to give it a little bit of it on here and I'm gonna go just like just dab just on the edges and another thing I'm gonna mention to you too these get pretty nasty on the back so you're gonna have to when you're done take and paint the backs unless you're gonna set them into something that's gonna be glued down and it doesn't matter because you always want to finish the backs of your products projects or products nicely okay unless it's going to be in a case where like this cameo over here it's not going to show so then it doesn't matter so put a little bit more over the top you might say well that's not quite getting it for me Brenda Sue I think I'd like to see a little bit more well okay then let's take this rag as nasty as it is and let's now normally I'd probably use this on a sponge this is the the Ranger Vintage Ink. Just a little bit on here. Yeah, that's good enough. And I'll just add that. Maybe. Oops. I'm so fumble figured today. Too much coffee this morning. There we go. All right. Let that soak in a bit. Now. This will come up real nice. Maybe you want a little more. This might be the product you want to use then. Now we've got some really cool antiquing going on in there. See that? Well, what if I just kept going? What if I just took it and squirted on there? Well, I don't know. Let's see what happens. You can do this with Swelligant, too. And I have to tell you, I love these Ranger Vintage inks. They're really cool. There's no learning curve with them. They work quick. But in the long run, you can do the same thing I'm doing with this right here with a little bit of brass Swelligant on your rag. And Swelligant is a much less expensive product. And it has real metal in it so you can raise patina. You get half an ounce in one of these. You get two ounces in a bottle of Swelligant. And it goes a little further because it's less runny. But see, that gives you an idea. See, the thing is, is you have so many choices. You can start out with a few bottles or metal coatings of Swelligant, one patina, uh, clear sealant. I usually like to use spray Krylon over this stuff, which you can get at Walmart. But the sealer for Vintage is good, and the sealer for Swelligant is excellent. I really like the Swelligant sealer very, very much, and once again, it has the price advantage. Um, but you can just keep going. You could take your gold leafer and get in there and add a little more. You know, if you have one of these pens, you can have just a few colors of Gilder's paste. People ask me all the time, what would you get in the Gilder's paste? That's very simple. The ones we carry on the website. Because those are the only ones that I feel that you really, really have to have. The rest are icing on the cake, and it's all very nice. But um, there's so much to choose from. It's like, why buy what you don't need? But that's up to you. Metallics. Definitely in Gilder's paste. You can't beat the metallics. And pinotage. Definitely white and black also are excellent. But this gives you a great idea of the Spectrum Noir paint. Uh, paint pens are alcohol ink, so it's really good if maybe you hit the tops. If you use this, um, hit the top a little bit with a little tiny bit of heat. Not much because this is resin, not metal. All these products work over metal as well. So myself, I have them all. I wouldn't be without all of them. I carry all of them because I believe in all of them. But, you know, if you just have to start out with a few, start out with a few colors. Like in the Vintage, I like the weathered copper the best. And these new metallics are really, really cool. A Spectrum Noir, I like the brown set the best. 
Um, in the Gilders Pace, I like metallics, pinotage white, and black the best. And in Swelligant, I just love it all. What can I tell you? I love it all. But if you can only do a few, get like brass, get copper, get silver, and get uh, Tiffany patina, and get darkening patina, get the clear coat, and a couple of dioxides, and you're ready to go. And Swelligant is very inexpensive, so it goes a long way. So have fun. And get Lindsay's tutorial off the website. It'll help you out a lot. And everything that you see in this video is carried at bsuboutiques.com. And we have a decent stock, so come on over and visit us.